Hello and welcome everybody uh, to this episode of the Cockroach Hour. Uh, this week is a little different than some of the things that we've done in the past. Uh, this week we're going to talk uh, to a very well-respected and incredibly knowledgeable uh, industry analyst about kind of what's going on with, with databases and cloud databases and kind of the shift in market of what we've seen over the past couple of years. I'm really excited to, um, to, for, this, for this session. But before we get started, um, I know people typically ask us, you know, is this beginner, intermediate, advanced? I think it's more of a beginner session that we're going to talk about the market in general and kind of what we think the future of databases are. We would love to get your input along the way as well. Um, you know, this is a great opportunity to ask questions um, of somebody who actually knows pretty well what's going on across, you know, a lot of the vendors in, in cloud database, but just general trends in the market in terms of what uh, organizations are doing in terms of how they're adopting and how they're actually approaching the cloud and cloud databases, this sort of stuff. So um, gosh, by, by all means, please do ask questions. We love those. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat and the QA along the way. So feel free to uh, to dump those into, into those channels uh, as we move on. If there's any clarification, I'm happy to to pick questions off and, and, and lob them into our guest here. And maybe I might try to answer some of them as well. So um, with that, I'm gonna start video. And Matt, if you don't mind, if you wanna come off video or come on, I guess come on video, right? Um, how are you today, Matt? Good, good morning or good afternoon to you, right? Uh, it is definitely, yeah. Yeah, hi there, good, uh, good to be here. Thanks for having us on. Yep. So everybody, I, I, like I said, we're honored to have uh, Matt Aslett. Matt's a research director um, at 451 Research. And Matt, I've known you for, I guess, probably about 10 years, going way back to the Hadoop days, right? How long have you been with 451 Research? It's uh, it's coming up for 15 years, actually. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit of a while. Uh, yeah, I'm, I must have earned some kind of uh, carriage clock or, or something, I'm not sure. But uh, right? yeah, it's been, uh, it's been good fun. And uh, as, you, as you suggested there, lots of, uh, we've seen lots of changes in the data space. So it's been, uh, yeah, it's been a good place to be. Yeah, it's definitely been an interesting 15 years. And I think you've had a front row seat to a lot of very interesting movements. Um, Matt, what, what is your focus today at, at 451 Research? Yeah, so currently I run the what we call our data AI and analytics channel. So I'm responsible for for leading that group. But there's six of us uh, currently who you know contribute to that, and, and that covers everything from obviously the back end data platforms, you know, databases. Uh, still a little bit of Hadoop, but you know, Spark and 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 even obviously you know data lakes and and data warehouses through data management, data integration, etc analytics, machine learning, and, and data science. So yeah, we cover between us the, the whole of that. And then within that, uh, you know, I'm responsible for our coverage of things like streaming data and data acceleration, and, and particularly sort of ensuring that we keep a sense of the wider industry trends and how those impact the data space. So hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, you know, other, other sort of uh, general transformational changes that are happening and making sure that we reflect that in our coverage of you know what is still focused on the core data areas yeah, yeah. and you know i know matt you like i said you know we we've known each other for a while you know your coverage of the hoops i'm happy that hadoop is still tricking along a little bit you know what i mean like i mean it was like i you know i was uh, i loved it it was fun back then you know and it was funny sure. like you know you know, it, it's funny, people don't dissect the name Cloudera, Cloudera too often, but it was Cloud Era. I think they just named their company way too early. You know what I mean? Like, I think right. we're, you know what I mean? Like, I think we're kind yeah. of at the advent of what this cloud thing is really going to be. And that's why we're seeing, you know, the, these, these, you know, the, 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 you know, the modern data lake kind of built on S3 buckets and, you know, this sort of stuff. And I think it's, a, there's very interesting trends. I mean, today we want to talk about something that I think you saw emerging Oh gosh, about ten years ago, right? When did like you, you wrote this report, and that's what we're going to talk about today, everybody? Is this Matt actually wrote a report called 10 Years of New SQL: Back to the Future of Distributed Relational Database?" Um, and and I think you know, Matt, you were the very first person to actually coin the term "New SQL." Oh gosh, 10, 11 years ago, or whatever that was, right? Uh -huh. And so, what we're going to do today, everybody, is kind of talk through um, really the the transition and what's happened over the past ten years, and kind of looking into the future of what we think, you know, databases are. I, I, I wish I had a crystal ball. I think I do. I'm that cockroach, but that's a separate story. 
Um, I think what we're doing is right, but you know, that's, that's just me, but let's just, let's just start with the, with the report and why you wrote the report. Right. So, you know, I'm going to try to do my best, like, you know, Sunday news television show. I'm going to give a quote. I'm not going to trap you at all, Matt, but so in this, you wrote, you know, a decade later, it's interesting to look back on the first report to examine the fortunes of the various vendors we cited as examples of new sequel. Um, because yeah, you wrote a report. It's about 10 years. I think it's 11 years ago now, something like that. Uh, and you had coined the term new sequel. What were you seeing then? And then weirdly what's changed that, that made you kind of yeah. take a, take a step back and, and re rethink this, Matt. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, as you say, it was, it was, you know, roughly 10 years ago, I suppose it was probably 11 when we started thinking it, you know, we, it's, you know, as we, as we continue to do, we were just observing that the changes in the market. And I think, you know, clearly for a couple of years before that or a year or so before that, you know, we'd seen a lot of, you know, the emergence of NoSQL and clearly there was a lot of excitement around that. Uh, a lot of new vendors, a lot of, you know, talk about new trends and different approaches to databases, et cetera. And then we saw, you know, this emerging group of, uh, you know, relational database vendors but who were rethinking the relational database for a distributed cloud architecture. And, you know, I think there was a bunch of us, you know, by which I mean industry analysts and, you know, the people on the marketing side as well who were sort of throwing around different phrases for that. And, and yeah, I, we, I, you know, we just wrote this report at the time. It was actually looking at sort of um, – no sequel and what we term new sequel and you know right. where we thought some acquisitions and merger acquisition opportunities might lie and and i literally used the term new sequel initially just because we needed a term to apply to like these however many it was 10 12 companies and i didn't honestly put that much thought into it and i suppose if i'd known it would be <laughs> picked up by by the industry maybe we would have uh, defined it a little bit clearer right up front but you know it, it is what it is and it got picked up and and it was kind of interesting to see that happen i mean people just caught on to it and then subsequently to that i suppose i think it was 2016 collaborated with andy uh, pavlo from uh, from cmu on actually on a, a, a I would say, you know, and to be honest, he did the the brunt, uh, the most of the work there on actually technically defining what New SQL was and what was new about New SQL. And then, yeah, most recently, I actually was chatting with uh, with Andy about obviously his startup, uh, his new startup, and he'd mentioned he was doing a presentation around sort of ten year retrospective of New SQL. Right. And I hadn't even occurred to me that it was ten years. You know, time flies, and and. Um, and so I thought oh, it would be interesting to just look back. And, and it was fascinating to look back at that original report. And as we mentioned in, you know, in the, in the more recent report, to see how many of those companies weren't around anymore and to think yeah. about why that was. And in particular, because, you know, as I say, that first report, we looked at both NoSQL and NoSQL vendors were mentioned. Most of the NoSQL vendors are still around. A few didn't make it, you know, like Basho, but most of them are still around. And yet most of the new SQL vendors didn't make it. And that was then interesting to think about why that was and obviously look back and see what, what happened to them. Um, and then, you know, to think about the next generation, because I think what we have seen was a lot of those initial new SQL vendors haven't made it. There was then a second wave of companies right, right. that are, you know, that, and we'll go on to talk about that, that are sort of that next generation of new SQL, or obviously they don't necessarily use that term. We're going to talk about that, but yeah, so that's what we were trying to do yeah. is sort of reflect back on what had happened. Yeah. And yeah. you know, it's funny. I, I, you know, over the past year or so, I, I was kind of critical of the word new SQL because I'm sorry, I know you just threw it out there, Matt, but like, what happens when it's not new anymore in 10 years? You know I, mean? <laughs> well, like yeah. it's so I wasn't new. thinking about that. Yeah, I didn't right. exactly. think about that. <laughs> it was just a thing, right? Like I got to put this thing out there. And it's funny how like careful about your words, sometimes people pick up on them. Um, you know, there was a lot of different types of databases in there too. I mean, I, I, you know, yeah. like it's like these graph databases. I thought it, it was, I, I think there was like a kind of a cohort of things that were doing transactions and yeah. distributed, right? And I think, you know, I, you know, to me, I feel like it was a little bit, ahead of their time almost you know was it was it a timing yeah. thing or was it a technology and a software thing Matt? you know what i mean I, like I, mean, I, I think there's a lot of factors that that came into like some of these things falling off it, and i only ask because you know i, I want to talk about where we're at today and kind of like what people yeah. should be thinking about but like what was it that kind of like what, you know was the detriment to some of these early offerings that were out there yeah i mean i think 
you know, obviously with the benefit of hindsight, I think we can look back and say, you know, it, they it, they were they were they were too early to market. I think from a market um, readiness standpoint, but also from a, a technology standpoint. So, right. yeah, you look back. You know, there, there was a bunch of them. You know, companies like Zaround and GenieDB and Translatis. I mean, some people may not even remember some of these names that just simply fizzled out and closed the doors. Um, and even some of those that got acquired, um, you know, like Akiban and Foundation DB, that were, ended up both ended up at Apple a new ODB and Clustrix. So some of that technology is still around, but, you know, they certainly didn't get the, you know, the big exits that obviously, you know, that perhaps the founders and, and the, uh, and the investors along the way would have been hoping for. And I think, you know, I think one of the, the issues that we have to, to, to acknowledge is that those companies and, you know, and, and, and the cohort that came after were trying to, tackle actually what is one of the most significant challenges in computer right. science you know this is combining the scalability of, of sort of you know no sequel or distributed architecture with the structure consistency and performance and transactional support you need for a you know a transactional relational uh, database is is fundamentally hard um and so you know it i i and and i think you know, I don't want to get into the weeds of the cap theorem because God knows I've done that enough over the last sort of 15 years. But, you know, you recognize that the NoSQL databases, they gave up consistency in, fla- in favor of availability. And then over the last 10 years, they gradually added consistency to, you know, to their offerings. Whereas the new SQL vendors, obviously, as we thought of them then, were trying to do it all in one go. And I think, right. you know, that, as I said, that, that's fundamentally hard. And also, you know, I think the market wasn't ready. You know, think of a lot of companies that, that, you know, 10 years ago, you know, knocking on the door of a potential customer and saying, you know, we can deliver you a distributed relational database. And you've yeah. got yeah. the likes of IBM and Oracle and, uh, you know, SAP and saying, hey, look, you know, if this could be done, we'd have done it by now. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, I'm sure they were having those kind of conversations. So, you know, they were facing a, a market that was dominated by some big players who, let's face it, a lot of companies, less so today, but especially then, were absolutely reliant upon. So, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was a difficult market to yeah. get into. It even took the NoSQL vendors, you know, a lot of time. And they were coming up with something which was very different. So, That's right. And, you know, I think it's like, you know, some of the work that happened at Google over the last 15 years. I mean, we talk about, you know, the cap there. I mean, that's Eric Brewer, who's a distinguished, you know, uh, scholar at at Google. And I think, you know, that's it's Brewer's theorem. Actually, it's not even the cap theorem. Right. And so, you know, moving towards a CP database versus AP, I think AP databases, that's what people think of when they think of NoSQL. You know, it's, you know, partition tolerant and, and available and then, you know, consistency and partition tolerant. Those are difficult challenges to solve. I think we've gone through a lot of the core computer science to get us there. I think, yeah. you know, I love I love talking to you, Matt, because I mean, you do you you go in the circles of people like Ando Pavlo, and he's he's brilliant. He's brilliant, and and you know, some of these people that are kind of really pushing the bounds. To me, I almost feel like the it was too early because I don't think people have shifted into this distributed mindset. Like, yeah. I think, I think what's happened today is like, we, you know, with the cloud becoming more relevant um, and prevalent for that matter, I think organizations are starting to think about the cloud and they're starting to think distributed. And I think, you know, one of these things that I see with distributed databases, and, you know, we talk about a lot about this here with our customers and what, it, what I'm at is like, I think it's one thing to implement a distributed database, but it actually takes a different mindset, right? Like, cause the queries change, right? Like, are you going to insert 10,000 records in a single statement or are you going to break that down into 10 statements and do a thousand each? You know what I mean? Like you need to take advantage. And it's like, I think that's one of the things that changed. I mean, are you, is that what you're seeing yeah. in, in, in like the, the larger cost, like, like less about us, the vendors and more of the practitioners, you know, are there, yeah. are people starting to get there? Do you feel that that, that sea change is happening, Matt? I, I do. Yeah, I do think so. And I think you're right. You know, it's, I, I think, you know, 10 years ago, as you, as you say, even if you were a vendor, you know, who had solved this, let's say for argument's sake, you're going into a customer and saying, you know, we can deliver you a distributed relational database. I think in a lot of cases, they probably were getting a response like, I, I don't think we need one of those. Right. Like, you know, what, what, Why? what would we use that for? Yeah. <laughs> right. and, and, and even if, and, and then even if they did understand what they might want to use it for, probably being a bit skeptical that 
you have you really done that or you yeah. know I, it, how much of this is is uh, you know is marketing plus so and i think yeah the, the world has evolved clearly the underlying infrastructure has evolved you know cloud native architecture has as you know come through and so and and yes the the, the thinking of uh you know in jesus both the developers and and the sort of uh, you know the administrator side of things as well has changed i think there's more yeah. of a a greater understanding of uh what is possible is a greater understanding of, of the application requirements for uh, yeah. the, the uh, sorry the application uh, capabilities that require a distributed database and yeah. so yes yeah. our companies organizations are thinking much more in a distributed architectural fashion and that so the market is now much more ready for uh you know the, what is now just dist uh, distributed sql architecture. yeah, the, yeah. This, this sort of thing is becoming more popular because i think the the sea change is starting to happen it's kind of like you know it's funny it's like we talk about distributed system and sql and all these different things and i you know i contend that this will all just be relational database we'll just fall back into relational database it's just a different way of doing this you know and you know it's way back i think when we first started talking about big data, I was like, well, isn't it just data? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what is big data anymore even? You know, I know, I mean, we talk about lakes and all these different things, but let's talk about the terms. And actually I wanna share, uh, I wanna share the screen again and actually call out a, a, a quote that you had made, Matt. Hold on a second, let me, hey, what's my laptop doing here? All right, can you see that, Matt? Yeah. 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 So there was another quote that I pulled out of the report and, and you know, somebody was asking, you know, can we get a copy of the report? I put a, uh, a link to the copy of the report if anybody's interested in actually reading Matt's research. It's it's a phenomenal piece of work. Um, and it's I put it into the, the chat. But so these next generation offerings could be argued to be delivering the truest examples of new SQL, given that they have re-architected the concept from the relational database for a globally distributed architecture. These vendors, Cockroach being one of them, I'm I'm sorry, this is a little bit of commercial. We're hosting you, Matt, right? So they have and and some of our peers by and large, stopped using the term new SQL, preferring distributed SQL. Um, I'm guilty, definitely. Um, I felt it was much more descriptive of what we were doing. Um, I, you know, the, the, the thinking about a globally distributed architecture, I think is important. I don't think everything is globally distributed though. You know, so are these things still relevant? I think is one of the questions. Um, but, but in general, I mean, is this the dawn of a, of a new category or is, just, is this just, you know, the, an extension of, you know, the relational database, which has been owned by Oracle and DB2 and all that? I mean, is this the next generation of that, Matt? Like, we're, we're, yeah. what do you, what, why a new term? You know what I mean? Is it a new market, I guess, is my big question. So, uh, I mean, I think it is a new market in terms of the, uh, you know, go back to what I was just saying earlier, in terms of the application requirements. So, ah, right. so, 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 so yes, it, it is. But to your point, how long will that last and will that just become what is expected of, of a relational database? That, I think that's a good, good question. Um, yeah, in terms of, sort of the, the terminology itself, it's funny, you know, having, you know, having obviously... Being, being known as the person who actually started using the term new sequel i think people a lot of people think i must have some sort of uh you're the guy uh, you know like i'm married, the guy, to, it, I'm married to it and i'm gonna <laughs> defend it and like uh, no. you know from day one i was like okay that's really cool you're using that but uh, yeah like i said if i'd known people were going to use that and put more thought into it it's like okay that's cool but it's great and then some people started using other terms and like that's cool too as mm -hmm. long as we all know what we're talking about and i think you know the point is uh you know the the the, the, the sort of the subcategory we like of new sequel which was these brand new you know distributed relational products built from scratch to be a distributed relational right. product rather than you know an existing offering with you know with some things bolted onto it i think that as I said, you know, as you said, in, uh, used in that quote, that's probably the truest example of what I thought of as new SQL when we use the term. Um, but actually, distributed SQL is frankly a better <laughs> term. I mean, it's it's more descriptive. It better articulates the value. To your point, you know, these things are only new for as long as they are new, and then it, right, exactly, it fit anymore. So, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's. Uh, uh, you know, it, it is a better term, and I think it yeah. is. Um, it, it it has more meaning clearly for end users in terms of the no, new SQL, which doesn't really you know mean that much. So yeah, yeah. And you you touched on something at the very beginning of that, Matt, and you you know you talked about how I think these newer solutions are 
re-architected and built from the scratch to be this way. Yeah. You know what I mean? What is it about, you know, the more legacy systems that you can't kind of just move and improve, right? That's what I, I like to use, lift and shift, move and improve, right? Like lift and shift, yeah, move it to the cloud, whatever. Move and yeah. improve, take a piece of it and change it. Like, why re-architect? What, what, what is it? I mean, because I think that is a definition of what this new group of vendors is, right? They're kind of re-architecting yeah. and rethinking it, right? No, exactly. And I think, you know, I would definitely encourage people, maybe we can, we can send the, the, the link subsequently to look at the, 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 the paper, as I said, a co-authored with, with Andy uh, Pavlo, which, you know, got much more into the technical nuances yeah. Of, yeah. of what was new about New SQL. And, you know, you know, if things like, you know, sort of, you know, consensus protocols and, and you know, multi-version concurrency control, how you deal with snapshots, obviously timestamps being a significant issue. Um, you know, that, uh, back to what we were saying earlier, that's mature, that underlying technology that enables a distributed uh, database has matured, you know, obviously over the last 10 years as well. And there's, you know, I think, you know, back thinking about 10 years, there were sort of multiple approaches to doing that. And I think, you know, some of those have fallen, you know, equally sort of fallen by the wayside. And there's much a lot more consensus around what the core uh, technologies are that, that enable a, a distributed transactional uh, database today. Um, yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, I think, you know, it, it isn't just a matter of re you know, renaming what, what has existed previously. It is, or, or you know, as I said, just bolting on capabilities to an existing database. Because obviously, obviously after all, you know, the, the definition of distributed is, is very subjective. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, some database products that have been around for 40 years could be described as distributed, but they're not, you know, globally distributed. They're not able to operate across multiple regions um, and, and or even yeah. multiple clouds. So, so, yeah, I think that is the context with which I mean, certainly I now think about distributed SQL. It's it's that glow. It's a even if the the requirements might not always require a globally distributed architecture, it's the ability to to operate on at that level. Yeah, I like to say often that the you know the speed of light is no joke. Um, no, I mean seriously, we are at the yeah. point now with with technology where we are now playing with 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 physical limitations of of, you know, we're, we're hitting those caps. Right. And I think that's, what's yeah. interesting, you know, like the, the upper limits, the upper bounds of what we can actually do. I mean, I'm excited because of just the software engineering that's been put into these sort of things, you know what I mean? And so, you know, how much do you think organizations need to understand things like raft and MVCC, right? There's like, there's certain protocols that I know, I'm sure you and Andy Pavlo have pints and talk about and whatever, but you know, maybe not, but you know, I mean, that stuff is important to understand. Sure. I think once I understood those, you know, you know, right. Once yeah. I understood those things, a lot of stuff started making a whole lot of sense to me. You know what I mean? And like, you yeah. know, so how is important is it for you, you know, for, for just, you know, if there's a developer on the phone, who's, you know, out of school or been developing for 10 or 15 or even 40 years, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how important is it for them to actually understand the core principles and these kind of distributed algorithms that are being used by these databases raft yeah. mvcc there's a couple of paxos you know there's several yeah you exactly. think it's important matt i do I, I do think it's important i mean going back to what we were saying about having that the mindset and the distributed mm -hmm. mindset and i do think it's important to to understand those technologies from that mindset obviously increasingly and again this is slightly changes the subject but we can get on to about this obviously increasingly yeah. with these products being delivered as sort of managed services you don't need to actually understand how right. those things work in order to, to, you don't need to work with them and operate them. But I think, yeah, having a fun, having a, a general understanding of the, the core underlying technology is, is significant in, in uh, having that mindset. And I suppose sort of opening people's eyes to like, oh, okay, this is something different. It's not just the existing database you know, that's been around for 40 years, but, stretch that little bit more it's it's a yeah. you know there's a fundamental architectural shift that's up that's, that's happening under the covers here and i think that's i you know to, to me i'm i'm merging questions here matt but that's that is a big piece of why this is new to me right yeah. like it, it is it's built on different concepts i mean if you think yes. about you know i db2 and the age of db2 is what like 1972 is system r like it's 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 this is technology it's 
man, our nuclear codes are running this stuff, uh, our banking, our financial services, like this stuff works. Like, and I think yeah. there's a risk reward profile with people, but I think people are starting to realize like the reward, the, the balance is starting to shift. I think that's another one of those things about the timing uh, of, of this market as well. I think it's kind of interesting. So, you know, how, how many people are actually going down this path now? Actually, let me bring up, there was a stat in the paper as well. Let me bring that up again, Matt, one second. Yeah. Let me, yeah, there was a good stat about um, people using these technologies. I mean, oh man, you know, sometimes the Mac OS just kills me. Um, so you guys did a survey. Uh, the population was, I guess, 560 respondents, right? Which of the following best describes your organization's usage of a globally distributed database? Um, and 58% already use or plan to do so within the, the next 12 months. I was shocked, dude. I was shocked by this. Like I, I you know, because a lot of organizations we're talking to, I, I you know, I, my guess would have been about 35 to 38. Were yeah. you surprised by this or was it, you know, was it the population? Like, how do you feel it, about I, this? I, yeah, no, I was, I was surprised. And I think yeah. um, one thing you have to bear in mind, because actually when, when we, you know, we ask a lot of these similar kind of questions about, you know, newer or emerging technologies and quite often actually the, the, the amount, uh, the, the proportion that are, that are using or intending to is, is quite high. Um, yeah. I think, you know, sometimes this is a matter of, well, obviously, when we're saying they intend to within 12 months, clearly that's an intent. doesn't mean they're necessarily going to. But even, you know, when they're using them, you know, clearly if you've got something that is being tested and you've got, a, you know, a, an experimental, you know, something going on, that's not the same as, as obviously it running your mission critical application. So, but the question is, do you have one of those? And the answer would be yes. Right. So right. I think, you know, obviously you can then delve into more detail and, and we try to do that, obviously, in terms of the level of adoption. But, you know, I think it, so. So I think the way we look at these is it, it, they definitely uh, are indicative of a level of interest and a level of um, intent around, uh, it, you know, the potential for adoption. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. As I say, they often come up quite high, but we've asked around other things. I won't name names, perhaps, but which do come out really low. So they're not always really high. So, you know, there, there are other things that don't come up that high. But yes, it was, I was surprised. Um, and it, I think, it, 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 you know, but it's indicative of yeah. a, a, a real change in, back to what we were saying earlier, that mindset and the level of interest and understanding of the potential. Yeah. And I think, you know, look, y'all running surveys is not easy. Yeah. You're trying to get some sort of directional, right? And I think directionally, yeah. Yeah. it was correct. Like, I think the numbers... Yeah. Yeah, who knows, right? Who knows what really the numbers are, what's statistically significant in this world yeah. anymore? You know, I mean, I don't want to call out any elections or anything, but I don't believe any stats <laughs> anymore. Um, the, uh, you know, it, it, what's interesting though, man, did you, do you get a sense of like type of organization that's type that's doing this or is it just everybody? I mean, is this something that if, you, if you're on the call right now, like to me, yeah. well, yeah, go use Cockroach because I, I work here. I mean, is this is it all types of organization or was it, you know, just in the startups? Is it just like the big guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it is. So, so generally, you know, it is across the board, but there's definitely clusters. And I think what's interesting, and we see this often actually with, with newer technologies of all, you know, of, of all kinds is it's, you know, it's like a bar, you know, like a barbell thing. You've got the large enterprises, you have the resources and, right. you know, put a lot of money in there. Obviously, you know, historically we've seen, you know, financial services, retail, telecoms, government, you know, put money in adopting particularly newer databases, new new approaches to data processing. Sure. And then obviously you've got the smaller, the other end, small startups who are agile and trying to do things new right at the cutting edge. And so then you've got, you know, the, the bulk, perhaps the bulk of organizations are somewhere in the middle. And, and it's interesting, we've seen that, we've done some analysis of, uh, of, of previous surveys and actually, yeah, in terms of attitudes and approaches, there's the, the large older companies have much more in common with the smaller ad, you know, startups than you'd think in terms of their attitudes to technology, obviously not necessarily in terms of how they adopt them and how they use them and the scale and everything. But yeah, in terms of, um, uh, their willingness to, to, to look at and adopt new technologies, definitely. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's 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 interesting. One of the emerging trends that I'm seeing, both within database and other layers too. You know, I was in, I've been in the Kubernetes space for a while too, and like, so, you know, kind of the, the 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 shift to these trends. It's it's interesting. I think people are starting to use this stuff as a way to attract good talent as well. Like, and yeah. I think it's you know, and it's and it's across the board. You know, you feel like. You know, some of our like one of our biggest customers is DoorDash. DoorDash wants to be, you know, the the last leg of delivery. I don't care if it's food or goods or whatever. Like, and they're rearchitecting on Cockroach because, well, they they're seeing the efficiencies, right? Like where they were using some other sort of cloud database. And so, are they a startup or are they like an existing? You know, they aren't JPMC, but they aren't you know brand new. I don't know dot whatever IO company that just started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think a lot of it. They they see the efficiency. They 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 know they have to attract talent as well. And I yeah. think it's. I think that range is really going to be interesting. You know. Yeah, and definitely, I think we see that within you know some not all obviously, but some larger enterprises where you know there's like a you know a, a, an innovation center or you yeah, know, a, a, you know, particularly those that are driven often again not always by a chief data officer, someone who's got that mandate to drive data driven change. Yeah, they actually operate those parts of the business at least operate much more like a, a startup. And then yeah. obviously the next challenge is how you, you, you get that to filter out to the rest of the, the business. But yeah, no, it, 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 we see a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting times. You know, it's funny. We are having an internal conversation here. I, finally, I was in an office and I was with somebody else and I had like a intriguing side conversation, man. It's been like a year and a half. I'm driving, going crazy. <laughs> um, but we were talking about how I think over the last like three or four years, there's been a lot of tooling for the operator, the admin, the SRE, yeah. you know what I mean? Like there's been a lot of these things like for, to help them kind of transition to the cloud. You know, what are the new things that have been put out there for the, the architect, you know, the software, there's not a whole lot, you know what I mean? I think mm. this is one of those layers that I think is helping drive them think differently about their, their application architectures too, because you do start yeah. to think differently. And yeah. so I think it'll be interesting trend. So, no, so, let, so let's shift then, you know, to the last part of this and, you know, let's put on our, you know, forward looking, you know, hats, you know, I, I, I'll just, I'll be blunt. You know, I started, I asked this a little bit earlier. Does this distributed SQL thing take over kind of the relational market? Does it, you know, is, is this, is this the next generation for those kind of transactional workloads? Um, what do you what do you think about that, man? I, I hate to put um, you on the spot there. I mean, you might have clients in these big companies too, so you may have to be careful. But yeah, well, it's I mean, it's an interesting well, I time. Simply, I will simply say this: you know, having observed, you know, fifteen years as an analyst and before that, uh, however long it was as a as a journalist in the IT space, particularly in the database space. You know, I already mentioned some of the you know the big vendors that we all know. Their market shares have diminished, but not by a huge amount in the last, you know, 15, 20 years. There's still a lot of, you know, maintenance, big maintenance revenue, a lot of trust, you know, customers who really trust them. So, you know, the database market evolves relatively slowly. You know, even yeah. like, you know, talking about NoSQL, you know, NoSQL clearly and those different, you know, there's been NoSQL vendors clearly now have a toehold in the market. But it takes a long time. It's taken a long time already, and it will continue to take a long time for them to have a larger impact on the existing, you know, the incumbents. And I think the same will be true of distributed SQL. Obviously, you know, I think the distributed SQL vendors that exist now are in a much better position than the new SQL vendors were. 10 years ago, you know, to make a, an impact in the market. And I think, you know, we talked about some of the reasons for that, you know, the adoption trends, the, the user mentality, the technology itself. But also, I think one thing we, we observed in the report that we haven't really mentioned, actually, is I think what some of the, you know, the next generation of distributed SQL vendors have uh, s s learned, perhaps from the NoSQL yeah. vendors, is yeah. that the engagement with the developers uh, to your point and the operators and and making uh the technologies not just functionally elegant <laughs> you know from a database perspective but really easy to consume and work with and and obviously you know we see that with especially with you know managed services uh you know managed cloud offerings that are just making it so much easier for companies to adopt newer technologies and try out you know d develop new applications try out what is now the state of the art 
and, yeah. and the state of the, or the art of the possible or whatever, you know, in relation to these distributed uh, architecture. So, um, yeah, I think it, it, yeah, from my perspective, they, there is, they, they, they have a much better opportunity to, to grab that toehold and to begin yeah. to make a, an impact in the database space, definitely. You know, and, 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 and we're already and, seeing that that is happening. But. And we are, and you know, look at like, is, is the database market the largest software market on the planet? I don't know. It's up there. It's, it's a pretty it, yeah, damn big one. Yeah, you know what I mean? And so yeah. I think there's room for a lot of different things. And I think you're going to oh, use yeah. a different tool for different, you know, things And I, you know, kudos to Mongo, by the way. I mean, come on. Like they came at this from a completely different way. What, 10, 15 yeah. years ago, they said, oh, you guys are selling to DBAs. Well, we're going to go sell to the developer. And I think everybody was like, we well, can sell to the develop developers. Don't buy anything. Remember this? Like, it was like, yeah. like man, did they prove something right? Because I think, you know, those decisions about which database to use are often made in an instant. Like, uh, I, I have an idea for an app. I need a database. Go spin up Postgres. I, I know Mongo because I learned it in college. Like, and that's where those things happen, right? And I think yeah. that's where this, the power of the developer is not like, like they're driving everything. It, it's decisions are made very quickly in these companies, yeah. you know what I mean? Absolutely, and so yeah. there, there was a question before I get into the last thing, I want to talk a little bit more about developer and kind of that sort of stuff, Matt, but there was a question and, and somebody asked us to talk a little bit more in terms of the, the mindset, the different mindset between NoSQL databases and those that are distributed. And I guess maybe from the eye of the consumer in terms of like workloads and that type of stuff, you know, where do you differentiate? If somebody was to ask you like, okay, what would I use, you know, a NoSQL database versus one of these new distributed SQL databases? Like, what, what do you typically talk to people about? Yeah, I mean, and it is something we, you know, we have worked with a number of clients on that, you know, as, as you'd imagine, you know, from an user perspective. Um, and, and, you know, there are always obviously multiple sort of uh, attributes that you can take into account. But, um, you know, often, and, it, and obviously it also depends if you're, refactoring an existing application versus yeah. developing yeah. something new from scratch so that is is definitely a key point of view because then that has significant implications in terms of well, what is the data model and that can very quickly lead you into you know, as you say like you know mongo versus a, a relational database, database for example and then you know you talk obviously a lot about you know the, the skill set within the organization for both from a developer and a, and a database administrator administrator uh, perspective, um, you know, the nature of the application itself, the yeah. requirement yeah. for, you know, to what extent it, it, are you actually going to be you know, performing SQL queries against this, uh, the database. Um, uh, so, yeah, there's multiple factors that, that can go in there. And, and certainly, as I say, we work with, with a number of different companies around that in terms of, you know, thinking through that, you know, if, if that, then this and, and, you know, yeah. but, um, you know, it, and, yeah, but you can quite quickly, I think, when you start thinking about some of those attributes, um, and also when you add in the fact that clearly most organizations don't want to have 20 databases, they might be happy to have, you know, five or six or however, but, you know, so they will have rules in place that say, you know, these are the databases you can choose from as well. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to take that into account as well. Yeah. And just understanding the underlying complexities of each of the types of databases, just a, it's a really important thing to, you know, you know what is your skill set? What, what's going to fit you and your organization? You know, and I think yeah. that's the, that's the trick. I think, and it's every, every, yeah. you know, the fingerprint of every organization is different. I mean, do you have developers who are okay with a, you know, relatively kind of schemaless document model where they, yeah. there's complexity and, you know, schema is not changing as much, or are yeah. you into transactions and you don't care about, you know, isolation levels? And the, the questions are so many that it's yeah. hard to just say one way or the other, right? I think it's a, and, and also, a tough and question. Also, yeah, and also, it's, you know, often it comes down to, sort of the, you know, the culture of the organization as, as, yeah, as well. Exactly. And so, you know, in many cases, I remember, you know, a few years ago, trying to figure out, particularly around some of the, the NoSQL databases, which were all, you know, a lot of them were pretty similar, but all slightly different. It was like, you'd say to companies, well, why did you choose this one for that particular project? And, and often they'd be like, well, because that's what the guy, you know, that's what the team well, used is, for the previous one. Well, and that's what and, I'm saying, Matt. And those decisions are made and it, it like, yeah. it'll, like, I just did it. You know, well, that's yeah. what I was using before, right? Yeah. Yeah. And we've seen cases where the organizations where, the uh you know the, the the database group are out 
you know, using multiple new databases because they want to do new things. But we've also seen it where the business actually wanted the database group to be doing that. Use new databases. Right. Let's try and innovate. And the database group were like, well, no, we all know Oracle. So we're just going to use Oracle. So, it, you know, it depends on the culture of the organization and, yeah, all different factors. Yeah. So, look, at lots of choices. There's no SQL. There's distributed SQL. There's our relational databases. There's, I don't know, I, I, I start to define cloud databases, all these different things. Right. Yeah. You know, I think one of the emerging trends that I know you've written about a couple of times, Matt, and you and I have had some conversations about this, you know, in, in a very clear direction for Cockroach is this whole concept of serverless. And, you know, the future of the, I mean, do you believe that is the future of the database? I mean, you know, I, I like to think as a developer, you know, having a very simple, elegant SQL API in the cloud, yeah. that sounds like a dream. Like, I don't have to deal with a DBA. I, nothing against DBAs, but like, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, I know. But, but like, hey, right, like, why not make it as simple as that, right? Like, yeah. I think that's what we code yeah. against APIs for security. We code against APIs for yeah. lots of different things. You know, like, do you see that as kind of the, the future? I mean, is that the direction that it's all this is headed? It, it, it's definitely, you know, a, a future. It's one of those, and I think for the reasons you just right. said, you know, we do we do it for all kinds of other things. So so why not the database? And you said with, and, and clearly it will take a, you know, a change in mindset from organizations, you know, and a, a, mind, a change in mindset from, you know that that DBA role, which clearly hold in a in a lot of companies holds a lot of sway, obviously around That's technology for sure, yeah. choice. And so, yeah, it will be somewhat slow to evolve, particularly in sort of later adopters. Um, but yeah, we do it with other other technologies. Why why not the database? And particularly as you know, we see increasingly adoption of you know managed managed database services where the uh you know the, the the some of the complexity around the configuration etc is being abstracted away well you know if you're doing that with the underlying infrastructure and the, and the underlying architecture where it makes sense to do so why not do that with the actual you know the database itself so yeah it, it's clearly not going to be at least for the immediate future it's not going to be uh, um, the sort of thing that's appropriate for every kind of workload, but it, you know, we I anticipate we'll definitely see a lot of a, increasing adoption of it. And and again, our survey data, you know, points to a to a similar thing. Not quite to the extent of globally distributed database, but you know, definitely we're we're heading in that direction. That's awesome. Yeah, I you know we we feel it as you know there's a there's a sense in the market that this is directionally correct. Again, yeah. you know, I mean you. You can only look at data in so many different ways, Matt, and you know, to, to infer direction. We feel it's happening as well here at Cockroach. And I think it's, you know, there's been considerable interest in our, you know, we had a, a beta of our serverless and it was just like the amount of people that came into that thing. It was just intense, you know, and I think people are interested. And yeah, so I think definitely. we'll we'll see where this all goes. So, um, well, thanks, Matt. I, you know, that was, a, I, I always enjoy talking to you. So I really enjoyed that conversation. Um, and thank you for publishing the report and moving on from the term new sequel. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's quite fun. So, um, but, I'll, but thank I'll you have for to the... invent something else now. I don't, I'll come up with some other ridiculous yeah, thing. Right? But, yeah, right. And yeah, the thing right. is, I mean... you, I, I've tried to do that since. You know, you think, hey, this is a term everyone's going to go with. And nobody does. So it was the one I didn't really put any thought into that people picked up. So well, you, you know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll I'll help with the distributed SQL thing as much as I can. I think it's funny, like the no SQL thing stuck for so long. Like yeah, it's just such yeah, a absolutely. weird moniker, you know, like yeah. So but hey, you know, these things happen. So um Matt, thank you so much for joining me today. Um I really, really enjoyed the conversation. Right. No, um, me too. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Awesome. And, you know, thank you everybody for, for joining as well. We'll, we'll send a recording out to everybody. We'll send the paper to everybody. Matt, let me get the, I'll get the link from you about the stuff you did with Andy Pavlo. If anybody doesn't yeah. know who Andy is, Andy's brilliant. He's a, he's a professor of databases at CMU, Carnegie Mellon. He's fairly brilliant. Uh, you know, he's, it may, it may even actually be linked in, in the paper you're sending out, but I'll, I'll yeah, I think it, it is. Like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll get it out and follow up with everybody. Somebody who's asking for that paper and whatnot. So we'll cool. get that out to everybody. So. Absolutely. Um, so with that, again, uh, thank you, Matt, for, for joining us today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, and we look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great day.